what we're going to be going over here is we're going to be using some cost, volume, profit, and analysis here in some decision making. Okay, so this is the problem that we're going to be presented with. We're going to have to make the decision here on the reducing the selling price of a certain product we're marketing. Currently, we're selling a certain number of units of this product here, and based on those unit sales, we're generating a certain operating income here. So the idea is here, if we reduce the selling price of the product, we can increase the unit number of units sold here, and then also by increasing those number of units sold, we can increase our operating income. Okay, so let's go back and look at our, our proposal here. We're proposing that we're going to reduce the selling price here by 12% on this uh, on this product here along with it we're also looking at a reduction here in some purchase costs on the product here that is some variable cost here looking at a seven percent reduction on that now with those uh, price or the selling price here reduction and also the variable cost reduction of seven percent here we're looking at uh, increasing our sales here by 20 percent so this is the problem we're looking at. We have to see if this is a viable alternative. And we're going to start out here by looking at this cost, volume, profit graph here. And what we do here with our graph here, we're going to be looking at our profit line here, what were our current operations on this product here, and we're going to have to compare that to what we propose here with those uh, uh, selling price reductions and so forth. Okay, so what you're doing here, uh, you have to determine both the contribution margin per uh, unit here for both what we're doing here currently and what we're in our proposal here. So let's look at, let's just start with our current profit volume line here. And again, that's on our cost volume profit graph on our x-axis. Those are represent our units sold here from 0 to 300 units in this example here. And then along our y-axis, that's our operating income. But our operating income, that includes some fixed cost here on, those, on, our, on our product here. Now, the fixed cost here is actually a negative operating income. We have to cover our fixed cost before we actually have any positive op operating income. Okay, so let's look at our blue, start with our blue line here, what is currently going on with the product. Now, here's the case where we have to go and we have to look at that contribution margin per unit. We have to determine the slope of that line or how much each unit we sell here contributes towards our operating income. Okay, so let's really do it for both lines here, for both our proposal here and also what's currently going on. Okay, so for uh, before any price reductions here, we're looking at a selling price here of $50 per unit and a variable cost here of $30 per unit. So the difference here is going to give us a contribution margin here of $20 per unit. That's before any price reduction. So for every unit we sell, we have $20 here that's going again towards our operating income. Okay, so now let's look at after our price reductions here. Uh, what we would have here, we're gonna, our selling price, we're gonna reduce it here from $50 down to $44 per unit. That's that 12% reduction in our selling price. And our variable costs, we're just looking at that is uh, those purchase costs. We're gonna reduce those from $30 per unit down to $28 per unit. So after our price reductions here, we're actually coming up with a contribution margin here of $16 per unit. The $44 selling price here and our variable cost here at $28 per unit, per unit here for that $16 uh, contribution uh, per unit. So for each unit we sell here, based on our proposal, we're going to get $16 here that goes towards operating income. Okay, so let's look at uh, what's currently going on with the product. In case for both cases here, we have a, a fixed cost here of two thousand dollars. So uh, that's before we sell any units here, and two thousand here. That's a negative operating income. So we have to sell. Go, let's just look at our current. What's currently going on here? We have to sell. We're moving up our based on those twenty dollars per unit here. Current on a, a currently going on with the product here. We'd have to sell a hundred units here. To break even before we start uh, re realizing any positive operating income. So that is really uh, 
the $20 here uh, contribution or contribution uh, margin here per unit. Divide that into the $2,000 uh, fixed cost here, and that's going to give us 100 units that we have to sell our break-even point. So we have to cover our fixed costs first here. And everything in our fixed cost, everything up to our zero opera, where our zero, where we start with a zero operating income, that is a loss. Now, continuing up our line here, our blue line here for uh, currently what's going on. We come up to the point here where currently we're selling 170 units here of this product. Okay, so we go up here to our profit line here for, and we move, the, move over to our operating income and that equates to $1,400 here in operating income. So how do we get that? Well, we take our total sale, our total number of units here, 170 units, times our $20 per unit uh, contribution margin. That's going to give us, what, $3,400? But remen remember, of the $3,400, $2,000 here has to go towards fixed costs. So subtracting $2,000 uh, from the $3,400, that gives us the $1,400 here in operating income. So we covered our fixed cost, and then beyond that, we had $1,400 remaining here uh, to determine our operating income. Okay, so that, that's what we're currently operating at here. Now, let's look at our green line here, and that's the case here for our proposal, and this is where we calculated that contribution margin here at $16 per unit. Okay, so again, we started at a fixed cost here at a negative operating income of $2,000. We move up to our break-even point here, and it is would be 125 units. That's simply taking the 2,000 here in fixed cost divided by $16 per unit contribution margin is going to give us 125 units here. So we have to sell in at least to break even. We got to sell it here 125 units uh, based on our uh, proposal here, and of course only 100 units here based on currently what's going on. All right. So moving up our uh, propose our profit line here for a proposal. We're going to get up to the point here where we're looking at that 20% sales increase. That's simply taking what we're currently selling here, 170 units times 1.20 or 120% here. That's going to give us 204 units that we're, we're going to have sold here based on that 20% 20 sales increase. So here we're sitting at uh, 204 units, moving over to our operating income line we only have $1,264 in operating income. You can see it's less than what's currently, what we're currently operating at here at 1,400 units, or $1,400. So how do we get to $1,264? Again, what you're, what you're going to do here is you'd have to take your 204 units here that you'd be selling here times that $16 per unit here. And that's going to give us what? That would actually give us $3,264. But again, $2,000 here has to go against our fixed cost. So that only leaves us with $1,264 here in operating income. So I guess the decision is pretty simple here. You cannot, uh, that selling, pr that reduction in selling price along with that uh, reduction in our, our purchase cost here just isn't going to do it for us. Because currently, we have 1400 in operating income. If we make those changes here, those proposed changes, we drop our in operating income down to $1,264. So we're making, it's, it's just not a good decision here. We're, our operating income is reduced by what? A couple hundred bucks here. Okay, so what we want to look at here is really what we want to do is we want to get, if we're going to make any changes at all, we have to get our operating income here greater than the $1,400 that we're currently operating at. And just going over to our proposed cost line here, uh, just matching it up with what we're currently doing here, that's going to require that we have actually a 25% sales increase and we'd have to sell at least 212 units. So really what you what we want to do here, if we make any changes, we've got to go have, we're looking at an operating income that has to be greater than the $1,400. I'm just using this here uh, to equate it to whatever, what we're currently doing here. And we'll go through those numbers. Okay, so you see what's going on here. Uh, by If we made those, uh, or reduced our selling price by what we want here, we would have we wouldn't be increasing any operating income over what we're currently doing. We're 
actually reducing it. So not a good decision. Okay, so now let's go through our equations that would support these numbers so you can look at how we do that. Okay, okay, so first without a selling or this uh, purchase price reduction or cost price reduction, we have the 170 units sold and $1,400 in operating income. So when you're working with these uh, cost volume profit uh, uh, analysis here, you use this operating income equation and that's simply taking our selling price minus our variable cost and that whatever that difference is times the quantity that we sell and then taking that quantity we have to subtract out our fisc fixed cost give it to give us our operating income and currently we're sitting at fourteen hundred dollars so our selling price here was fifty well our selling price fifty dollars per unit variable cost here at thirty so the difference gives us a contribution margin here of twenty dollars per unit times the hundred and seventy units we're currently selling now you'd have to subtract out your fixed cost here from that and that's going to give us our operating income here of fourteen hundred dollars okay so that's uh, what we're sitting with here without any of those uh, price reductions now let's go up and let's look at the case here where we're going to be looking at uh, those uh, price reduction or those uh, reductions in our selling price and our increases in our sales so same operating equation operating income equation that we used now the only point I want to make here is you can just use, we're going to be using some simple algebra here to determine some quantities and dollars and so forth. But what, just taking your equation here, setting each one equal to some variable up here, uh, you can manipulate your, uh, use your algebra, manipulate your equation here to determine certain quantities and that. So if you have one unknown and all the other variables are known, you can determine it very easily through some simple algebra. Okay, so that's what that's the only thing point I want to make here. Okay, so let's look at our 20% increase in our sales. That was that 170 units here that we're currently selling times 1.20 or 120% gives us those 204 units here. Okay, so here's our operating income. We really want that target greater than 1400, but we have our uh, with those reductions here, we have that $44 here in selling price. A variable cost here twenty eight dollars times those two hundred and four units here that twenty percent increase in unit sales here minus that fixed cost that we have at two thousand here that's going to give us that operating income that we looked at here at twelve hundred sixty four dollars really the sixteen dollars here was a the contribution margin here based on those uh, price uh, selling price reductions and so forth times that two hundred and four additional 20% here in unit sales at 204 units minus our fixed cost again $1264 and that is less than what we targeted here uh, we want it greater than 1400 here in operating income we have 1264 so not a good decision uh, another alternative has to be looked at okay so let's look at um, those how we'd uh, look at it this way we look at our required sales increase here we'd have to have a greater than 25 percent increase in our sales for our operating income here to be greater than fourteen hundred dollars that's based on that contribution margin that we looked at now that isn't a good alternative i'm just going to go through the numbers here so you can see how we we determined our quantities here so the 25 percent increase in our sales again 170 times 1.25 gives us 212 units but when we're dealing with uh, this cost volume profit analysis we have we can you have to use this equation here we can use this equation here on the contribution margins per unit so the quantity sold that equals our fixed cost of 2000 here plus our operating income that we're looking at at 1400 here we really want greater than 1400 but we're using at a 1400 so that total amount here divided by the contribution uh, on a per a contribution margin here on a per unit base at a $16 per unit that gives us the 212 units or the quantity that is sold here so just just doing our using our uh, contribution margin method here to determine the number of units okay so now let's go down and let's do some more manipulation here so the question is what sales price is required when the purchase cost is $28 per unit 
we drove that down here from 30 down to $28 with an expected 20% uh, increase in our sales here. And we were looking at where we continue to earn at least what we have here, that $1,400 in operating income. So again, moving to our algebra here, we have to determine our selling price here. And we know what our variable cost is at $28 per unit. We have our quantity here at 204 uh, units here based on that 20% sales increase. Then we would subtract out our fixed cost here of $2,000 and that's gonna equal our operating income here of $1,400. So the question is just using our algebra here, we wanna determine what our selling price should be based on what we're given here. Okay, so just manipulating our equation, our 204 quantity of 204 times X here, and then moving everything over here where we had that 1400 in operating income, then move our fixed cost over to this side of the equation of 2000 here. And then we also have that variable cost that we, a negative amount here that we moved over to $5,712. So our total amount here would be on our right side of the equation, 9,112 divided by those 204 uh, units that are sold. So we're gonna to have to have a sales price here of $44.67 per unit here. Uh, remember we had the proposed amount here of $44. Just using some simple manipulation here, we'd, our sales price would be actually $44.67. Only to show you how you can determ determine your selling price here as an unknown knowing your other inputs. Now, the other question is what purchase cost is required when you're, if your selling price here is $44. So again, some manipulation. $44 selling price, a variable cost here is the unknown as X, times those 204 units that we would be selling minus the 2,000 in fixed cost equals 1,400 in operating income. Just <clears throat> move over, rearrange your equation here where you end up with 204 units here of the excuse me of the variable cost and moving everything over here you have 1400 in your operating income then you move your 2000 over here on your uh, uh, fixed cost and then you'd have to subtract out those 44 dollars times 204 that was a positive amount you come up with 89.76 combined total gives you $5,576 here after rearranging your equation, divided by those 204 units here, and your purchase cost in this case would have to be $27.33. The proposed amount was 28. So you'd have to get your uh, purchase cost down to, uh, at least you'd have to negotiate, get that down here by that additional amount here, down to 27.33. So just plug these numbers into the equation here. Uh, using some central algebra here to determine what sales price you'd be looking at versus, uh, in this case, our sales price would be greater than what we proposed here if we just use those numbers here. That's all we're looking at, just to manipulate them around here and see what you'd have to, using the simple algebra here to determine what your quantities or prices would be. Okay, so that'll summarize our topic here using this cost, volume, profit analysis here in decision making. And we used it here where we were looking at reducing our selling price and also our variable costs.